If you've followed Chef Gordon Ramsay's career, you're no stranger to his straightforward approach. But every now and then, a restaurant owner comes along that really pushes his buttons. Cue Chef Michel, the owner of the Secret Garden Restaurant. The guy is a walking contradiction, claiming his cuisine is superior to Ramsay's, while presiding over a kitchen that could double as a petri dish. Kinda makes you wonder if the restaurant's name, Secret Garden, was a clue to the hidden horrors within. Michel, the self-proclaimed culinary virtuoso, had an ego that didn't quite align with his cooking skills, or the state of his kitchen for that matter. First, we're gonna recap the episode, and then we're gonna dive into what happened to the secret garden and its somewhat overly confident owner, Michel, after the episode aired. Is the restaurant still open today? What happened to Michel? At the beginning of this episode, we traveled to Moore Park, California, a place known for its wine and multiple golf courses. You'd think a fine dining French restaurant would do quite well in such a place as Moore Park, but the secret garden is doing just the opposite, losing money, a lot of money. The owner of the secret garden, and also the one responsible for the problem, is Michel Bar David, a French chef who, after seven years running the restaurant, has accumulated a debt of $320,000. When I lose my temper, it's time for you to run. Ah, now I get it. The kitchen is a real hell for the employees, as Michel keeps yelling and humiliating them because that's the French way of how to run a restaurant. Apparently, according to Michel. As for the customers, the restaurant looks like something from two to three centuries ago because of its outdated decor, so it usually attracts an older crowd. The situation, coupled with Michel's arrogance, has the restaurant on the verge of bankruptcy. So the owner himself asks for Ramsey's help. But as soon as he arrives, Gordon finds the front door locked, so he has no choice but to enter through a side door. And surprise, there's no one to greet him. Well, there is some company, a caricature of a French chef. Who wants to sit and eat in front of that fat little bastard? He actually seemed kind of friendly to me. Finally, Gordon meets Michel and the staff in the kitchen, where they point out that the front door has not been in use for a while. Apparently, the secret garden takes its name so seriously that its entrance is a secret. Back in the dining room, Ramsay discovers his glass cup is dirty. He then receives a comically tiny and lonely loaf of bread in a huge basket. As for the menu, it's two huge pages of dishes with very long names. Just looking at it will spoil your appetite. Gordon decides to start with a dish of shrimp with strawberries, a most unusual combination that, of course, did not taste good. After that, it's a plate of Roquefort stuffed filet of beef, served on a huge mound of fat. After removing the mountain of fries, Gordon finds a steak, a rather tough one at that. Plus, the carrots were raw. Nightmare in Grandma's house. Me. Thank God she's dead. Disgusted by the experience, Gordon confronts Michel, calling his meal complete garbage. That's a matter of opinion. Did I tell you he was arrogant? But now, let's get to what you've all been waiting for, the kitchen inspection. Overall, the restaurant looks pretty good. I mean, at least it's clean. The kitchen, on the other hand, is one big mess of dust, grease, and other things Gordon probably shouldn't touch without gloves on. The fridge is the worst with food so moldy it was spreading all over the inside of the fridge. Even the produce containers were dirty. But the straw that broke the camel's back were the maggot-infested potatoes. And that's how Gordon ended up in the bathroom vomiting. Meanwhile, Michelle arrives at the restaurant as if nothing bad is happening. Hi, Gordon. No, Michelle, charisma won't save you from this one. Gordon shows him all his findings especially dark terrine chocolate with finger marks all over them. Hmm, I wonder whose finger marks those were. Instead of taking criticism, Michel reminds him that no kitchen is perfect, not even Gordon's. It's clean. It might not be perfect, but at least Chef Ramsay's kitchens are clean. The owner was still trying to defend his pride, no avail, but nearly collapses when Ramsay asks him how much profit he's generated in a year. Of course, he says nothing the answer would humiliate him. Despite that, he reminds Ramsay he does want his help, but without so much criticism. I bet some stuff in my time, but you take the piss. The rest of the day, Gordon orders a deep cleaning of the kitchen, 
with Michel himself doing part of the cleaning. After that, Ramsey stays for dinner service, although hardly any customers came in. While Michel's menu is hardly an encyclopedia of options, each dish takes an eternity to cook, like not one clocks in under 20 minutes. And get this, Michel justifies it by saying, in France, we don't mind waiting in restaurants. Hey Michel, newsflash, this isn't a Parisian cafe. This is America, the homeland of fast food, where the only thing we like slow cooked is our barbecue. Generally speaking, Americans prefer their meals without a side of lengthy wait times. While watching the kitchen dynamics, Gordon notices that the menu has way too many encrusted or stuffed ingredients, which is massively slowing down the food prep. Michelle's arrogance ends up confusing the kitchen, which causes frustration for sous chef Devin, who has a talent to do so much more, but is limited by his arrogant boss. As Michelle leaves for the dining room, orders finally start coming out thanks to Devin's efficiency. At the end of the day, Ramsey warns the owners that from now on, he must put aside his pride to work together with Devin and the others. And to make his message even clearer, Gordon has a little trick up his sleeve the next day for Michelle. Gordon shuts down the entire restaurant as if it was a mix between a foreclosure by the bank meets a homicide investigation scene with police tape. When Michelle arrives, of course, he's not amused by the situation, but that's the idea, to be so shocked by what would happen if his beloved restaurant went out of business that he would truly care about it for the first time. After that, Gordon shows the staff how to cook the dishes on the new menu, one focused on lower prices and fewer ingredients. In doing so, Ramsey ends up creating four specials that look delicious. Is he the great cook? No. Michel, you were recently cooking with moldy food. In the evening, the restaurant gets more crowded than ever because it's Saturday, which attracts a younger crowd. The response to the new specials is excellent. All the customers love them. However, things start to slow down in the kitchen due to lack of communication, and Michel cooks without even knowing where the dishes are going. As a consequence, the customers start to complain and, as always, the waitresses got the worst of it. In response, Michelle would only say, Let me worry about it. But the reality is he never got around to solving the problems and decided to deliver a bunch of dishes regardless of them going to the wrong table, humiliating his waitresses in the process. No, 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 no. Fed up with the disrespect, Jane, one of the waitresses, ends up leaving the restaurant in tears while her companion, Sammy, does her best to serve the rest of the customers. And so ended a day that should have been profitable for the specials, but turned out to be a huge failure due to Michelle's lousy management. So Ramsey gathers all the staff together to remind them of the mistakes they made, especially Michelle, who is on the defensive. Shut up! Thank you, Gordon. As part of the relaunch plan, Gordon gets rid of most of the old decorations and other knickknacks even though Michelle thinks they actually look good. After that, Ramsey's team adapts a secret garden to the 21st century, with a new sign, a front door that's no longer a secret, and other changes. The simple task of removing many items expanded the size of the dining room visually and made it more comfortable. The staff is fascinated by the changes, but Michelle, an old soul, points out that the restaurant has been rejuvenated too much. On top of that, he has the nerve to tell Ramsey he might be destroying his business, though he decides to give him a chance. Then along comes the big relaunch, for which Gordon invited a well-known food critic and some local celebrities like Miss California, which makes Michelle nervous. But you were so confident about your food recently, Michelle. What happened? As the restaurant fills up with customers, Michelle starts breaking down in the kitchen because of his nerves. But he still doesn't want Gordon to tell him what to do. If Gordon gets in my way, I promise I'll make him suffer. In the middle of the service, the critic gets her dish, and it's so spicy it makes her cough. So Michelle comes out to apologize to the woman, for in her a dish from his old menu that he's sure will meet her expectations. Gordon, your menu is not better than mine. Please, someone, take the restaurant away from this guy. Michelle insists on preparing his terrible stuffed beef filet. Ramsay can't take it anymore and leaves the kitchen. Still, he stays in the restaurant to have a private talk with Michel, who insists that his food is excellent and that only he knows how to run a restaurant. Who the f are you to turn around and tell me when you work like a pig? But not even Ramsay's fury brought Michel to his senses, 
who very cordially invites him to leave his restaurant. After a walk to get some fresh air, Gordon returns a bit calmer to prevent the old menu from ruining the relaunch, managing to convince Michelle. Thanks to that, the critic receives a high-quality dish that she ends up loving completely. Michel himself came out from the kitchen, and not only did he see the critics satisfied, but all the diners were delighted with the new menu. And if he needed further proof, there's a cash receipts showing that the restaurant had record sales that evening. Michel then admits to Gordon that he was blinded by arrogance for too long, but now that he saw the benefits of the new menu, he won't stop until he has a successful restaurant. In the next week, Michel kept his word, keeping the kitchen clean, appointing Jane as the manager, and satisfying the customers. That wraps up Gordon's mission, and before saying goodbye, he reminds Michelle and the staff that they have a wonderful place. They just need to keep the right focus. Well, the secret garden sure hid a lot of nasty secrets, but did it last? Was it able to stand the test of time? What happened to the secret garden in Chef Michelle Bar David? Although the ending of the episode was hopeful, a few months later, Michelle refused to follow Gordon's menu and went back to serving his old dishes, arguing that his loyal customers wanted him back. Still, the Secret Garden was one of the restaurants on Kitchen Nightmares that stayed open the longest after the episode aired, lasting all the way to 2015, eight years after the episode. They closed for good because Michelle was going through a divorce, according to Reality TV Update Source. But how did the restaurant do while it was open? Well, not too well. The Secret Garden on Yelp had 3.6 stars, which is not a disastrous rating, but the disparity between excellent and negative reviews is so ridiculous that some Yelpers believe Michel himself paid for positive ratings. As for the negative reviews, most agree that the ambience of the place was still dated, that the menu was interesting but the dishes were disappointing, and of course, that the owner was too arrogant. The curious thing is that some of these criticisms were answered by Michel himself, to explain in detail what happened that day with the service and to apologize. He may be back to his old habits, but at least he took the time to respond. Back to the sale of the Secret Garden. The property was purchased by Danny Margolis from Command Performance Catering, who completely renovated the restaurant and named it M on High Street. Since then, the restaurant enjoys 4.5 stars on Yelp and good reviews overall. They often cater events for the community. As for what happened to Michel, he continued to live in Moore Park, and in 2016, started working at a restaurant called Custom Pie, where he prepared pizzas. However, a few months later, Michel decided to buy the place and rename it Custom Pie and the Bar Next Door, where he continued to experiment with avant-garde recipes and built a good reputation. It seems like in that place he applied Gordon's advice, because in the photos he looks happy and the customers on Yelp were satisfied. Here he is in an interview in 2020, looking good sporting a beard, discussing challenges he has had with COVID-19. He ended up selling the restaurant to a new owner, Hakab Zakarian, not long after. The reasons are unknown, but at least the new owner has maintained his good reputation at Custom Pie. After that, he decided to purchase The Cave, a Ventura, California wine cellar and restaurant, where he remains at today, according to their Facebook profile. Overall, he looks happy with his life, and I think he'll do well. Oh, and he got remarried. Here he is with his new wife. They enjoy riding their Harley Davidson motorcycles up and down the Pacific coast together. Overall, he has had quite the run since first appearing on Kitchen Nightmares over 15 years ago. I wish Michelle and his family all the best of luck in the future.